take a look at Bengaluru, a city which uh, complains a lot about collapsing infrastructure. Do Bengalurians go and vote? Unfortunately, they don't. Voter turnout last time was 55%. Just one in every two Bengalurians had voted. We expect the voter turnout to be better. Guess what? It was a Wednesday. So you couldn't take the long weekends that sometimes the upper middle class wish to take at voting day. So let's go straight across to Sagai Raj, uh, our correspondent on the ground there in Bengaluru. Sagai, voter, voting still going on. We expect voter turnout to be at least higher than what it was five years ago. What have you seen through the day? Have you seen excitement over polling day today? So if you notice, uh, uh, when it comes to Bengaluru uh, South, uh, it was uh, uh, quite, uh, the quite, uh, quite considerable rate in the morning. But as the day progressed, especially in Bengaluru South, Central, as well as in the North, it was quite disappointing uh, uh, in, where the turnout seemed to be quite less. I am right now in Bangalore Central in one of the constituencies. And you can see there are hardly people behind me. There are two booths here, and one booth has registered close to 58% and the other booth around 50 percent and uh, apart from Bengaluru if you notice the other places like Ramnagara, Dakshin Kannada, uh, uh, Dakshin Kannada, Ramnagara, Udupi they seem to be a resounding performance close to 60 to 62 percent around 3 p.m. and this might increase uh, uh, probably in another 45 minutes where uh, we learn from our uh, reporters uh, there in those constituencies that there are more people who are waiting in the queue to excite their franchise but in Bengaluru it's quite disappointing in a few constituencies. But few MLAs have also alleged that a lot of people, a lot of voters uh, uh, tried to come here, but their names were left out from the voters' lists. The same old allegations which was being made by, by the Congress MLAs saying that many minorities' votes uh, were been removed uh, from Shivaji Nagar as well as Shanti Nagar. Now, the same allegations from the MLAs on the same. Okay, uh, we'll come back to you, Sagai, for, for more. I saw Yash, uh, the film star, KGF star, there voting. So, good to see the film stars voting. You are pictures of Prime Minister Modi, who today, incidentally, is in Rajasthan uh, at the moment. Uh, Mr. Modi, there addressing uh, uh, effectively campaign meetings because that's the next big battleground state. It never stops for Prime Minister Modi. He seems to be on a constant election cycle, as are my colleagues uh, who are back here. Rahul Kaval looking rather spiffy in a new red jacket. What color is this, Rahul? Oh, what is the color? Yeah, Maroon. We, we've, got, we've got very serious things to talk about. We'll no, what, what is the color? Focused, very, I have no idea what the color is. It's a very smart jo, looking jo color. Designer deta, I have, and, uh, and we've got uh, Preeti Chaudhary just back from uh, all over Karnataka. Uh, not on a bike, but still traveling across uh, a beautiful state, right? But, uh, stunning, stunning. But you went through the prettiest part. I went through... Central, old Mysuru region, then to Kalyan, Karnataka, you went to the prettier part. No, I did. The, the prettiest, well, look, you know, let's not compare which is prettiest, but there are different parts of Karnataka that have their own magic. You go to coastal Karnataka, there's this place called Marvante, where you have the uh, sea on one side and you have the backwaters on the other, magnificent. Go to Kurg, terrific forest land in the western ghats. Uh, you can come to Kabini, magnificent mm -hmm. uh, uh, wildlife. Uh, and, and you can see old Mysore, which is a beautiful city. And then there's the chaos of Bangalore. So it's, oh. a, it's a beautiful part of the world. And this is, make no mistake, the most significant election this year. Because if the BJP is able to hold on to power, despite the anti-incumbency that the government faces, if Modi can do a Rinku Singh, pull the BJP out of a hole in the last phase of campaigning and when the exit poll numbers come out, if he can show that there's been a turnaround in the back of the Modi magic, then where does it take the Prime Minister's individual stick? On the other hand, if the Congress is able to snatch Karnataka from the Bharatiya Janata Party, it would be the first convincing victory for the Congress in a direct fight with the BJP since Chhattisgarh 2018. Remember, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh were both tight wins where the Congress didn't really cross the magic figure. Chhattisgarh was where they won a resounding victory. The question is, can they do a Chhattisgarh? Because if they do that, it changes opposition dynamics in the build-up to the next election because it at least gives the Congress a sense that grand old party abhi zinda hai. Absolutely, Rahul. I think it is a, it, it's a make-or-break election, particularly for the Congress. 
Because if the Congress cannot hold on to Karnataka, it means that it has no real entry point into the south. It's already struggling in much of North India. Many of those states go to the polls uh, in, uh, in November, December. So the Congress desperately needs Karnataka in a sense to have some kind of a bridgehead going into the winter polls and then into the 2024 elections. I know critics of the Congress will say it's an ATM for the Congress. But either way, ATM or not, it's a state which is of great significance in this country and therefore for a party like the Congress, if they can't win Karnataka, given the fact that most uh, that trends have been anti-incumbency. No government, Rahul, remember, in Karnataka has been re-elected since 1985. So much like Himachal Pradesh, which the Congress won against the BJP, there's a history of anti-incumbency. If even in that anti-incumbency mood, the Congress can't pick up Karnataka, it would be But there uh, is no break. comparison in the political significance of a victory in Himachal oh, versus the political significance of a possible victory in Karnataka. This would charge the Congress to the extent that it will make them feel that we can still take on the BJP. Remember, after the 1962 war, many in the Indian army would speak of Chinese soldiers as if they were 10 feet tall, would you know go from Arunachal Pradesh all the way into Assam within a day. So, they became larger than life. If the BJP is indeed trounced by the Congress, it would give the Congress something to hold on to. And therefore, the next six hours are very exciting because at 6.30 p.m., we will start putting out the results of the exact poll. This is the team which has far and away the best track record when it comes to post-poll surveys. And also what makes it exciting is three of the last four elections in Karnataka have thrown up hung assemblies. Now that doesn't happen in too many other parts of the country where you get repeated hung assemblies. So Karnataka in that sense is a state which is fraught with uncertainty. I can tell you everyone in Karnataka has three options today. It's not just two. It could be a BJP win, it could be a Congress win in the exit poll at least, and a hung assembly. But we're going to go on to our reporters. But before that, Preeti, what's the nicest thing that you found on your travels to Karnataka? What to you is the standout th feature for you about Karnataka? Well, you know, politically or otherwise, but politically, you know, Rajdeep, I'd be watching out for three things. Number one, uh, you know, what we were told right from the beginning that uh, caste is above all when it comes down to voting in Karnataka has class cut caste. Why do I say that? Especially in my travels through central Karnataka and part of the belt that you were in, which is uh, Bombay, Karnataka, Kitur, Karnataka. You know, they say the Lingayat vote is standing strongly behind the BJP. But what I saw was the Lingayat vote in terms of when you go down to the rural belt, uh, it in terms of class, it was behind the Congress. The more affluent Lingayats behind the BJP. The second thing I'd like to watch out is in Kalyan, Karnataka, when we talk about the Dalit vote, uh, the Dalit is about, what, 17%, the left or the right Dalit, the left is supposed to be with the BJP, the right with the Congress. I did see um, anti-incumbency where the left uh, Dalit is concerned. I see, did see them gravitate towards the, the Congress. Lastly, you know, so much so, especially our colleagues who are local journalists there would say, you know, you guys coming in from Delhi making a big deal of this whole Bajrangal controversy. I'd want to see if it works for the Congress or against. Why I say for the Congress? I met a lot of Muslim voters who earlier on thought that go the SDPI way uh, and now deciding to go with the Congress way. Similarly, in, uh, you know, uh, old uh, Mysore region, a lot of Muslim voters who thought they could possibly vote for the JDS now thinking that maybe not because the Congress has come out openly and seemingly supported them.